All right, welcome back. I hope you had a good time messing around with uh, the expressions that we learned, value at time, time index, uh, and all that cool stuff. Uh, I just thought I'd take a sec to point out that uh, there is a tag on the Ideas Creations website for expressions where you can find uh, tutorials exclusively made for expressions. There's a lot of stuff there covering what you learn here and teaching you new things of how you can use them and manipulate them. Uh, we have how to create a selection box. Um, we have the expressions library, how to create an infinite timeline using offset and linking it to a control. We have a breakdown on how to use expression controls. Go ahead and check out those tutorials. Uh, they are pretty fun and pretty easy to follow. Uh, but for now, let's get back to looking at how to use linear and if else. So if else is an expression that comes back from uh, JavaScript. And this is where you create a condition. So um, let's first create a new uh, null object. And we're going to use its rotation. So let's come in here and put the rotation to one full rotation within the three second span of this comp. And uh, you can see there's the null that's just spinning around. And so we want our, let's add another, let's grab one of these shape layers from the previous video. Hit EE and just disable all these expressions. You can hit Control Home to center it. And uh, okay, so we have the null rotating. And we want to tell our, this little star something. We want to tell it that if the rotation of this object is less than a specific value, then it should not wiggle. It should not wiggle. So uh, let's go to position. And remember, we want our object to wiggle in position based on the rotation of the null. So our expressions can only affect the property they're applied to. So in this case, we want the position to wiggle. So we're going to apply the expression in position. And do we need, can we do this with keyframes? Uh, we probably can, but that's probably just going to be uh, complicated because we need to enable the wiggle at a certain point. So I'll alt click on position. And it's going to give me a transform the position. That's fine. We don't need that. Uh, what we do need is the wiggle that's going to be applied. So wiggle to comma 100. That's fine. Let's make this uh, a variable. So shaker equals wiggle. So anytime we mention shaker, it's going to use the wiggle. So I'll hit enter. Give Just give some space here. And we're going to type if. Remember this gave us an error before. And uh, let me just quickly type out how the syntax should be. So if two brackets, and then two curly brackets, and then else, and another two curly brackets. So that's how it looks. Uh, I, do, I don't usually like putting spaces in between uh, at your own discretion. So if, if is going to check a condition, and that condition is what's happening inside the two uh, ordinary brackets. If that statement is true, it's going to do what you find inside the two curly brackets. And if it's false, which is what else means, else do what's in these other uh, curly brackets. So we've said, if the rotation of this layer is less than 90 degrees. So we pick whip that rotation. Remember, you, have to, you, you should have your selector where you want the code for this to appear. So the cursor is there. We drag onto rotation. You'll see this comp layer null four dot transform dot rotation is added. And we're going to say, if it is less than 90. So if it's less than 90, what's it going to do? It's going to use the value. But what if it's greater than 90? Then in that case, it's going to do shaker. Hope that made sense. So let's click away and see what happens. So currently, we have our value 0, 0. And as it goes increasing, expressions calculate at every frame. So it's checking and check constantly checking as every frame updates whether or not the rotation is less than 90. So it's going to keep going. We're currently at 28. So as the time goes on, once we get to about 90, which should be around here, uh, the next frame is 91. So you'll see our wiggle has now kicked in. And now it's using shaker because now it's no longer less than 90. It's, it's not using value anymore. It's using shaker. So wiggle to 100 is what's applying once it hits 90. So there we go. And it's going to keep going until this value comes back down. 
So I can put this here to be 180, this one in the middle. And then this one at the end can go back to zero so that we have something less than 90. So you'll see it comes on, shakes, and then goes off because now the value is going down below 90. So that's how if else works. Let's try a different scenario. Let's say if time is less than one second. So this is basically how you switch on a wiggle. Remember, a wiggle was constantly active, but sometimes you only want it to apply in a certain range. So in this case, it's going to do time is less than one. So time is currently less than one, but once we hit this one second, it's gonna start wiggling. And since we're using time and time doesn't go back, it's just gonna be like that uh, for the rest of the composition. So, that's how you add conditions. Now, you can actually add in multiple conditions into the same statement. So you can say if time is greater than one, and so you add a pipe, which means or, that looks like that, uh, actually two of them, and we say time is less than three, four, three, let's do three. So what's gonna happen now is it's going to check if the time is greater than one or if the time is less than three. Oh, this is or, it should be and. So let's do and, which is uh, ampersand. So if the time is greater than one and the time is less than three, which means we will only want the wiggle between the duration of one second and three seconds. If that's the case, then it's going to use value, which is wrong. We actually want this to be shaker. And then if it's not in that range, we want it to use value. So you should be very careful with how you use these curly brackets on either side. So when I play this out, you'll see time is currently uh, less than one. So it's using the else, which is value. And then we'll go out. Once we hit one, we are within the range. So it's going to wiggle. And then once we hit three seconds, it's going to stop. So now we effectively have a wiggle happening within a specific range. And this can be done with pretty much anything. Uh, really, if you understand how the logic works, you can pretty much do anything. So if, if this is shaker, wiggle to 100. Uh, we can even change this to say, uh, when on, should be one word. And then you can say when off, it can do a slightly a weaker wiggle, like say uh, 0.5 and 2. So that here we can do when on, when off. So now when on is at 0.52, there we go, and then it resets. It is kind of wiggling, it's really hard to see, but it's definitely moving. Uh, two pixels is a bit less, but um, you get the idea. So try out how to use if else, mess around with that conditioning. Uh, there's actually ways to stack if else's together. You can actually put another if else inside here, another if else inside here. You can use value at time with your variables. You can use pretty much anything. So go ahead and test out if, see how it works. Uh, for the meantime, we can s uh, forget about this for now and move on to the next piece, which is linear. Uh, for linear, we're going to need an expression control. So let's grab shape layer 12. We'll go on down to, um, or we can go effect. Whoops, it's selected, right? Yes, effect, uh, expression controls, and we're going to add a slider control. And this slider is just a number that you can play around with. It goes negative, it goes positive. Uh, these, you can also switch on this little slider down here that goes zero to 100. So what we want to do is make this zero to 100, make this object do a few things. We want it to, to slide in from the left side and sort of rotate at the same time. So this is gonna be a little complicated, but uh, I'm gonna show you the syntax and I hope you can try and figure this out on your own. So we want it to slide in from left to the center. So we know the left side, so we can do here left side equals to bracket zero comma value uh, one. So that's gonna keep the y value whatever it is and the zero is just going to set it to zero which is uh, on the left side. Then next we want uh, center. Now the center of the comp is still going to be value. 
so we can just um we really don't need to do this but i'm gonna do it anyway uh, value so we're gonna type in uh, linear and this is going to be so now we need to give it a control to look out for and that's this one here so watch so we're telling it to watch the effect slider control slider and then we're going to give it the range that this slider is going to have so that's going to be 0 to 100 and then we're going to tell it how to interpolate this so when the slider is on 0 what's it going to do it's going to be on left side and then when it's on 100 which is this 100 here it's going to be in center so that's it the expression is done i want to click in here currently we're at 100 that's fine but as i slide this you'll see our little guy moves around so go ahead and try and set this for yourself inside the rotation property so that as it moves in it's going to rotate uh, 180 degrees so if you manage to do that you went into rotation and you did the same thing so let's do we don't need to define any variables this time so we'll go linear we'll add a bracket we'll uh, reference this comma zero comma let's do uh, 100 and then it's gonna go from 0 to 180 degrees so what will happen is now it's going to slide in and rotate at the same time based on this slider very nice so let's go back and um, let's do something here you see this 100 let's set this to 50 so what will happen now is that the range of the rotation is only going to happen from 0 to 50 of this slider so remember on 0 it's going to be 0 on 50 it's going to be 180 so when I slide this over you'll see the position still happens but once my slider hits 50 which is there you can see it's already at 180 degrees and now it's just going to continue so roll and slide so this is uh, a, a nice way to do something like uh, a sort of a lock so let me hit u uh, sorry ee -E, to show properties with expressions <laughs> and uh, uh, let's do here 0 to 50 will be 0 to 180 so it's going to turn and then here from 50 to 100 it's going to slide so let's just bring it in a bit so that we can see it so we'll change this 0 to 150 so that it's just a bit inside so remember 50 to 100 it's going to go when it's at 50 it's going to do left side when it's at 100 it's going to do center whereas here in the rotation when it's 0 it's going to do 0 and when it's 50 it's going to do 180 it's a bit of a headache to work with but once you understand how it works it's pretty straightforward so let's go to slider control and see what happens from 0 we're going to slide over to 150 there's our rotation sorry to 50 there's the rotation and once we hit 50 it now does the slide uh, you can probably make some really cool stuff with this um, but once again this is definitely something that you can do with keyframes so remember how long it took us to get this uh, expression going let's try and do this with keyframes so i'm going to duplicate this hit ee -E. i'm going to switch these off um, I'm going to put a keyframe here at, uh, okay, so let's do the slider, hit U, and go over to 2 seconds, and just move this to 100, and at the beginning it should be 0, and then on the other one, I can make this uh, red, since it has the expression, this one blue, since it doesn't, and then, um, so we'll just do keyframes, uh, let's see, so it goes like this, so we just do here, 180 move the position keyframe here actually this is the end so we put it there and then we can slide this here and now we have pretty much the same thing happening but this time with keyframes so we've actually in legitimately done the same thing so we can uh, say if we want to extend the animation of this one we could just as easily select all these keyframes, hold down Alt, and drag this over so that they both line up, and now they're both exactly the same thing. So as we said before, there's no need to complicate your life <laughs> creating all these sort of keyframes, uh, sorry, creating these expressions when you could just as easily do the same with keyframes. All right, that was actually a lot of information, which is uh, why I'm just gonna call that that here. 
that's how to use the if and else expression. Um, I hope uh, it was straightforward and easy to understand. Don't forget, you can head over to Ideas to Creations and check out uh, some of the interesting expressions. We have like joining two points in 3D space, creating animated waves, uh, creating this expression-driven gauge, which is pretty much the same as what we've done using a slider so that you're able to uh, change this value. Um, if you remember with the north, south, west, east, the same is applied on this uh, piece here so that it's always pointing inside, you know, that kind of stuff, just to give you a sort of context and a better idea of exactly how your expressions are going to work and um, setting them up. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And uh, this is David Alex, and I'll see you in the next video.